Okay, well, uh, thanks for everyone to for joining the stream. Um, it's pretty exciting, and thanks a lot, Jaden, for having me. Uh, today is going to be pretty exciting because I want to talk about drawing from imagination. So I'm not going to be using any references today. Normally, I would, uh, even when I'm doing a study session. But I want to do a challenge for myself, mm -hmm. and maybe this challenge that I'm doing can inspire you guys to do, to do it as well. Because I want to just pick some random prompts and create some characters based on those random prompts. Okay, so I'm just going to rely on my imagination and my visual library. And I think that this is a good study for people to do in general when they're drawing for themselves because they don't really consider studying how to draw from imagination and getting better at drawing from imagination. This is especially important if you want to be a concept artist. It doesn't matter if you want to do characters, props, or environments. If you have the ability to draw from imagination, you can do a lot of cool things without having to rely having to rely on doing a bunch of research uh, and then having to rely on references because you can just jump into the thing, attack, and just get it done. And for me, if I give myself some right random prompts, I have to rely on some visual library that I have saved up in my brain, so basically memory. And I might not know if I'm able to to do it, like I might struggle in some places, but that's kind of like the fun of it, that's the exercise. I think I will do three uh, sketches in the first hour, and then I'll take a character that I like, take them to the next stage and refine them. That I think that's going to be my be my plan today, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with the uh, roll and uh, not gonna worry too much about it. If I do end up changing things as we go along, I don't really mind it. <laughs> so I just generated some random nouns, and uh, this is what I got got up with. So the list goes down: mysterious, femme fatale, eccentric, tech genius, rebellious teen witch. Shy Forest Guardian. It goes on and on. I'm just going to pick my favorite. And then if I pick one, maybe I'll shuffle the words around just to increase the challenge or just try to make it interesting. So and, I think uh, that... Feel free for people watching to to work along as well. You've got the list of, list of prompts yes. there. So take a pick and... Take a picture. Yeah, yeah take, a, take a screenshot or something. Maybe I'll write it down. And maybe you can draw with me and you can share it with me on Discord. Yeah, and uh, or you can just tag me on Instagram as well if you if you do follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna pick something random here, and I think like the, like mysterious femme fatale that might be interesting, but I kind of like the forest guardian one, so I might think of something was, like that there. I was gonna say that one's probably my favorite on the list. It sounds yeah. like a good one. It's cute. Yeah. Um, I saw loyal dragon companion, but that looks like a creature, so I might have to shuffle this one and change it up a bit. So maybe I want to do something with dragons. So I keep this one here. So I'll just change the color so I remember. So I'll have dragon something something. Maybe I'll uh, I'll pick. Um, I don't even know what the word enigmatic mean. What does that mean? Um, enigmatic. Uh, I was trying to figure out how best to de to describe that. Uh, let me I have Google. To have, I'm going to use Google. Enigmatic. Difficult to interpret or understand. So like mysterious. Oh, okay. Mysterious. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I do want something. Enigmatic dragon something. Yeah. All right. Enigmatic dragon queen. Okay. I think I might like that. Something... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do not like a full-on dragon, but actually like a humanoid here, so that might be fun. Okay, let's pick another one. I did a samurai warrior not too long ago, actually. So I'm going to skip that one for now. Uh, mischievous fairy trickster. Hmm. Mischievous circus witch. Hmm. Mm, so that we, could be interesting. That could be interesting. Yeah. So we have shy forest guardian, enigmatic dragon queen, and mischievous circus witch. Okay, that's going to be my the first few things I have. So I I'm gonna to have to save these. So I don't. Let me actually write it down.
All right, mischief. Yeah, E I E E. Who's circus witch? And uh, just for everyone, what? Where can they? Where can they find you on socials? On my socials, uh, sh mm -hmm. can I write in the chat? Uh, you you should be able to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just um. I'll, well, my name is Matthias Usland, by the way. So I'll just put that in the chat. And if you write my name, you can basically find mm -hmm. anything on my socials, like my Instagram, our station, etc. But I'll put in my uh, Instagram. I think that's probably the easiest for people. Did that post? Uh, oh, it was deleted it's... by moderator. <laughs> I can't post anymore. <laughs> it's okay, Melissa. I, got... I think Melissa's posted it. Oh, I'm okay, awesome. It. Yeah, I'm fixing it. I just it. got cancelled. Cancelled in chat. <laughs> Give me a second. You you carry on. I will be on the back end and sorting this out. Okay. Animatic <laughs> dragon. Was it which? No. Animatic Dragon Queen. Queen, and then we have Shy Forest Guardian. Shy Forest Guardian. That's gonna be my my main things to work with. I'm gonna start out with the Shy Forest Guardian because I think that's the since that was the first one, I'm gonna stick with that one for now. Yeah. Don't delete it, Matt. Just put it in here. There we go. Okay. So when it comes to drawing from imagination, and you know, since I don't really have any references, I would probably go on Pinterest, we'll go on Art Station, whatnot, maybe do some research, like, okay, what's the meaning of Guardian, you know, that what mythologies and whatnot. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Take elements that you have from that you have seen from media and from stories that you've read things like that in the past so let's say shy forest guardian maybe you can think of something from legend of zelda maybe you can think of something from world of warcraft maybe a book you've read and then you can be inspired from that either from a story point of perspective so you can take elements from the story and be inspired by that or you can take visual inspiration from your visual library so maybe if, if there is from a, a specific video game or from a movie or a series that you've seen, you can use that as an inspiration as well. You can pick it out. But the thing is, is that maybe you're not very good at drawing from imagination. That's the point of this exercise is to get better at drawing from imagination, trying to exercise those muscles. It's a, if it's a muscle that you have not used before, then it's not weird that you're gonna have a difficult time with it. And it's been like a recent exercise for me because I feel like I have been over-reliant on reference in the past, especially considering I've been working a lot with clients. It's not weird that we end up using references when we are working with clients because we can't spend too much trying to think and uh, experiment and exploring because we have to get the job done and uh, get it done and dusted and sent off to the clients so they can get their thing. But when we are working for ourselves, we want to exercise those muscles and become better artists. Okay, enough talking. I'm going to get started with the basic shapes. So I'll start off with like a general gesture. I move my mic. You can still hear me fine, right? It's like nice and oh, quality. Yeah. yeah, it sounds good. Good. So I'll um, start out with the basic shapes. Forest Guardian, we usually think of something like large bouldering, like a golem or something. But like the first thing we think of is usually like either a golem or a fairy or a elf or something like fantastical, right? That's usually what we think about when we think of like forest guardian. I might go for almost like a, like a, a fairy type uh, person. Uh, so I might go for something like that. So uh, shy, I'm thinking about the body posture. So I'm gonna go for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I suppose the the most like uh, well known way to 
show a shy character is have them like hunched over a bit, right? Oh yeah, you've kind of started doing it. I have started doing that, mm. yeah. Like keep that on that separate layer. Just like... There we go. And uh, usually my first few drawings are usually my worst. So I'll start out with like, uh, I think 20 minutes for each character. So I'll do something like that. Sure. Um, and if anyone watching has any questions, then uh, just drop them in chat and I can pass them on if Matt doesn't see them. Um, yes, please. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be very good at reading the chat. Yeah. I'm mostly, especially when I'm sketching, I'm usually focused. So if you have any questions, please pass it off yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay, so the first few things is I'm trying to get the feeling for the character. I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is a fairy type character. Maybe they have long hair, right? It goes down and uh, maybe they have some sort of dress, something made out of organic matter, like leaves, um, not leather, because leather is something that you, you know, you would have to kill a creature or something to make that. So I think trees, uh, leaves, uh, maybe some fungus or something, something smart that they have created themselves without hurting anyone. That's something that I'm thinking. Maybe they're shy because they don't actually meet anyone, that they're kind of wild. Yeah, like a character's first interaction with a with another person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And don't worry too much about, you know, trying to be super original or, you know, being perfect. You know, maybe I, the point is, is that I want to showcase my vulnerable side on the stream so you can see the way I think. And if I make some mistakes, it just goes to show that I'm just human. Okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It's, it's an exercise, etc. It's how you mm -hmm. learn. Exactly. So Matt, why don't um, while you're getting this like initial sketch down, why don't you uh, tell us a bit about your like background and how you got into what you do? Oh, okay, yeah, because there are probably people that don't know me very well. Mm. Mm -hmm. I uh, well, uh, as I said earlier, my name is Matthias Usland. I've been working as a freelancer now for about four years, coming to five now. Um, I've been working with Moon Colony for a little bit now, maybe a year and a half, I think. Uh, you guys are super awesome. And um, I love doing characters. It's my main thing that I do. Uh, I've done it since I was a kid, and I don't think I will stop making characters. I love playing with expressions, playing with uh, you know world building and things like that. And I didn't really know if I wanted to be a concept artist. I really liked making beautiful things, so I thought that maybe Illustration was something I would want to get into, but uh, since I kept drawing people in a white void again and again, <laughs> I decided that, well, okay, maybe I should focus on just character design because I keep making like different characters and it seemed to be a great fit for me. Uh, I love sketching, but I also love rendering as well. I don't think I'm as tight as something like a uh, Riot Splash artist, but I can definitely go clean if I need to. And um, yeah, what else do I need to say? Oh, yeah, I'm also an instructor. Uh, I teach at CGMA. Um, it's uh, something that I've been working on. I really like teaching. Um, and so like me coming here and doing the study sessions with you guys is always, uh, always fun because I get to <laughs> kind of teach a little bit at the same time while doing uh, what I like. So. Uh, I'm glad to hear you enjoy it. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. We uh, we try and make them as as chill as we can, while still providing something pretty pretty useful. Right, right, right. Um, 
We've actually we've had somebody uh, ask, do you usually thumbnail your pieces or just jump straight in? Uh, so thumbnailing is an optional thing you can do. You don't have mm. to thumbnail. Uh, thumbnailing is great for making very quick iterations and trying to figure out like what you want to do when you're trying to design so specifically for characters when I'm stuck and I don't really know what I want. Mm. This works really well if I'm working with clients because I can like quickly create something in five minutes. I don't have to show it to the client. I just, it's just for myself to kind of figure out like, okay, what do I want with this? And mm -hmm. if I don't like the first character, I just wasted five minutes. It's no big deal. Yeah. Instead of wasting an hour trying to make a new character. Um, if I feel kind of bold um, and I, or if I'm have a time constraint, like something like now, I'm, I'm not going to really spend uh, the time to, to do a thumbnail because I just want to uh, iterate uh, with like full character with a bit of details uh, on the get code with the limited time that I have. Mm. Uh, so I like to do both. Uh, I think both is very good. Uh, thumbnailing is a great exercise, but it's not a must. Yeah, so thumbnailing is more like, you know, like a rapid prototyping of, of your character designs almost, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you want to take another look at the list, then there's uh, a screenshot of it in the uh, in our Moon Colony Discord server. Um, and you can get a link to that by doing exclamation mark discord or by using the link that Christina kindly put in the chat. Um, got to get the got to get the cheeky plugs in there when you can. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes when I do expressions, I might make a similar expression on the stream. So I, I'm sorry if I'm making kind of like a sorry face. <laughs> yeah, people make fun of me about that. <laughs> you just become your own reference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I look on the screen for like reference. It's yeah. just that I, I make the face as I draw it. So <laughs> I'm trying to make the, the person kind of, you know, a little bit shy, a little bit scared, you know, but he's like a kind hearted. I want to be a, like a kind hearted fellow. So this is kind of like a, what's it called? A, a, like a goat man almost. Oh um, yeah. Uh, oh man. I, the word, there's a name for it, but they always yeah, look like a, a fawn. A fawn, yeah, a fawn. A I, fawn? Think that was, I think that's what they call oh, it. Oh, a satyr. Sa yeah, satyr. that's the one. Yeah. No, I thought a, a fawn or something that you were thinking about might be close to like a, a baby deer or something. Isn't oh, it? yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a satyr is definitely right. Yeah, so something similar to a, a, a satyr, mm. but... Um, I don't want to give him exactly Sadir features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that was in my head was Mr. Tumnus from uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. If I'm watching every study session, does that mean I'm about to become the ultimate artist at some point? Hey, maybe. <laughs> maybe I will. Yeah, I'll be the ultimate many. study session. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be the most ultimate study session that you will have ever seen yet. It's true. No pressure to me, of course. <laughs> oh, we've already, we've already promised the people. We've got to give them what we promised. Nah. Nah. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to keep my brush size not too small. I'm just uh, kind of feeling the character out a bit. And then once I'm a little bit more confident, I'll go in and maybe erase some of the sketchy areas and uh, maybe I resize some, oops, maybe I'll just resize some things uh, to, you know, maybe the head is too large or the body is too small. So let me just resize this for, for example make him more tucked in and then we can maybe do something with the body here. Maybe Looks he has digital art. 
you can just resize anything you want. Yeah, right? It's so, <laughs> man, it's so hard being a digital artist these days. <laughs> Man, having to draw things out and stuff, and then resize it. Man, <sighs> you gotta be so tech savvy. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't keep up with uh, these these kids these days. Yeah, Just take me back to to like coal on the walls of a cave. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's that was real art. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm getting the the eyes the way I want it. I'm very specific with faces to the point where I think I might even look a bit boring like doing it, but I'm I'm very specific about it, so I want to make sure I get it right. I feel like a lot of the personality and emotion uh, comes from the face, so if I can't do that right, I'm going to redo it until I get it right. And I get the shape that I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I didn't actually know that this guy was gonna gonna become a satyr. Um, that wasn't even the first th thought that I had. It was just maybe, maybe like a wild man. But he he ended up being a more like a creature than I than I had uh, expected. Do you think sometimes it's better to just go with wherever the, like, wherever the pen takes you? If you know what I mean. So. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to concept thing, you you just gotta embrace that sometimes mm -hmm. don't be too worried about being like i want to, this character to be exactly this unless that you're following a brief or a prompt right so as long like as long as he kind of fits that shy forest guardian that kind of prompt that i give myself yeah. then okay i'm happy as long as he looks good if the brief is a lot more specific i got to be careful in making sure that that you know i'm sticking to that speci mm -hmm. uh, specificity in the brief so if yeah. he specifically needs like tattoos and he cannot have long hair and needs to have a short hair, then I'm like, okay, I'll make sure to do that. Right? Yeah. But we're just we're just having fun, you know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah. about it. No stress. No stress. Uh do you have any tips for people who have problems with dynamic characters, aka line of action? So which mean that's more posing, but Ah, posing, huh? Uh, I would, well, do gesture drawing studies, first of all. So go on YouTube, go, uh, it, for some reason, some of those like YouTube channels gets taken down and new ones get popped up again because mm. YouTube doesn't like the nudity, but, um, like watch Proko's videos on gesture drawing and they have some resources there. Go and find some, uh, cool posts on Pinterest, YouTube. They have resources on like, uh, life drawing. Right. So they have people posing, they'll have like 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, that type of thing. So watch those videos, um, do the studies, apply them, and then find some poses on Pinterest and do some exercises with poses that have intention behind them. So if a person, like if you have a image on Pinterest of a person that's attacking, okay. And that's like the intent behind like the pose that you want to draw from study that, try and study the actual pose and reference from it, then do the drawing again, but from a different angle, from your imagination, just to see how you would do. And you got to draw with lines that are a lot more confidence behind them. So if you have like intent behind the, the lines, you know, something like this that I'm doing here, no scratchy thing. Don't be, don't be shy, you know, just attack and go for it. And sometimes it's very difficult, you know, if you have something like a hand, a hand is very complex to draw. You can't do that with like a few strokes. I mean, some people are very good at doing that with a few strokes, but with one line, if you want to have like that organic kind of feeling with the hand and you're drawing in the fingers or whatnot, I don't know what I was trying. That was, looking, that was the, looking like a glizzy. <laughs> yeah. That was the strangest <laughs> finger I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> looking like a cursed glizzy finger. <laughs> so, you know, if you're drawing like a hand and whatnot, you can start out with like uh, basic primitive shapes to start out with. So you ha you're thinking like you break it down into like simple shapes. You start out with like um, a box, right? Something similar to this. You modify the primitive shape to kind of fit the very primitive shape of a hand. And then you can add in another primitive shape to, to make in the thumb or the space for the thumb, things like that. So that, but all the lines are relatively confident and that's like 
creating quick instructions and you can kind of follow up with that with a whole figure okay so i'm thinking uh like the trousers what's the trousers going to be made? that can be made out of like some sort of uh handwoven fabric like mm -hmm. linen or something so yeah mm -hmm. that could that kind of makes sense okay let's kind of stick with that i, I definitely want him to be raggedy and kind of full of scraps uh, he has like a pouch but the pouch is made of like uh sticks and he probably has like a bunch of flowers and stuff in there he collected a bunch of th stuff Oh, thanks, Melissa. She's just put all of your like socials in the <laughs> in the chat. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Free marketing. Yeah, legit. So I'm just drawing the kind of like areas that are kind of abstract like the hair i'm not really too worried about you know construct like there's no need to construct hair who constructs hair come on just break it up into big medium and small shapes like i'm trying to think about you know here's like a medium shape you know here's like a bit smaller shape in here make that uh, smaller in here and this is a long stroke i'm trying to mix up my lines and shapes here to make it interesting and once i kind of got that and i kind of like the character i can kind of leave those areas i'm not going to worry too much about this you know, cleaning areas up. I can do that later. I'm just going to get the basic idea down, All right? Maybe he has uh, braided a bunch of his hair. Maybe he has a, a satyr woman somewhere who braids his hair, you know? Wholesome. Oh, very wholesome. Maybe the, the, the satyr lady is uh, like the opposite of him. She's a lot more assertive and outgoing she's the she's the like violent protector of the forest and he's the one that just politely asks you to turn around <laughs> <laughs> i could you know now we have a project yeah easy right <laughs> here we go i'll get i'll get writing the book as soon as we're done with this <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go for uh, feline feet instead of uh, hooves. Because I want to be different. I want to be different like that. That probably that probably help him get around the forest easier anyway, right? Hooves yeah, are go too clunky. Goat hooves are crazy. Have you seen goat hooves? The way they, you know, goat hooves, uh, goats, they can climb like almost vertically. Have you seen that? They're oh, like yeah. slicing mountains. Yeah, like the the mountain goats. They're like yeah. ankles can go like ninety degrees almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they're, I, I've uh, heard that their hooves, uh, are not that hard. At least, they have some sort of soft padding underneath, like on their soles, that gives them a perfect grip for climbing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like. Uh, I climb in my free time and I've been told by a few people that you should ideally have really soft hands. It's and that, that for some reason confused me. I always thought it'd be more the opposite. But how do you do, uh, can you train to have soft hands? Is that a thing? I mean, you can moisturize if that if that counts as training. <laughs> in a, like a baby moisturizer like all day every day for like yeah. seven times a week. Yeah. Well, you get like, uh, you get some people who will, they'll like take, um, like scissors and like, you know, cut. No, the hard, yeah. no, man. They'll like cut <laughs> the, like the hard bits of skin off their hands and everything. Yeah. It's the calluses. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll take a, like a file to them and just file them down. It's crazy. Yeah. Just Pecorino. <laughs> The, the cursed Pecorino. <laughs> Curse. <laughs> I mean, you started it, so... Obviously. Yeah, I know. I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just exfoliate, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, I was thinking that maybe he has like a nest on his staff. Like this is his staff he's carrying. Uh, and there's like a nest up there. Okay, I think we can move on to the next character in like a bit. Because uh, I feel like I kind of got the basic idea. And uh, yeah, that will kind of do for now. So that's like my basic Shy Forest Guardian that I got. I'm going to save that real quick. Let me put that in a separate layer. Alright, I got a shy forest guardian. Right. And yeah. Nice. That's looking nice. cool. Thanks, man. Uh next one is Mischievous Circus Witch. Whew. That's gonna be kinda hard to do, I think. Mm hmm And that's the fun bit. It's gonna be difficult. Okay. So I'm thinking, which, okay, gotta have a hat, right? Um, maybe like a wand or something. She's mischievous, so I can definitely kind of add the mischievous aspect to it, to her posture and facial expression. That's going to be fun. Uh, circus, something to do with the clowns, uh, maybe gestures, right? Um, maybe some goofy uh, tools that she can be using to, like, uh, hmm. Yeah, like a... Hmm. Uh... Uh, I can kind of picture in like that, you know, like the massive clown trousers, like massive clown pants. Yeah. Like, like clown pants, like the yeah. Maybe I should go for that. Yeah. Um. The only problem is that uh, the shape of the trousers might be too similar. Oh, to it's too similar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I might go for more like uh, tighter. So I might go for that. Maybe she has. What's it called? The um, ribboned, uh, uh, it's not a skirt. What, what, what do ballerinas have? Oh, a, a tutu? Kind of like a tutu or something similar yeah. to that. Yeah. Okay, I might go for something like that. Uh, something kind of silly. Okay, so I'm going to go for like the basic pose. Um, so I'm going to draw it like, uh, I kind of do, I, I kind of do gesture drawing and construction at the same time and it looks kind of weird. So I'm kind of thinking, I want to have her feet like going out there and then I'm going to give her like a silly pose like that, a bit of a bend. And maybe she has her arms up like this, like it, because she's a silly girl. This is her hips. I got to think about where the hips are. Uh, and obviously like the lines here doesn't actually represent her bones. It's just there to kind of help me guide the general direction of where the, the the limbs are supposed to be so it'd be cool to see what uh what prompts people in the chat are using if if you're following along that is yeah you don't have to use my prompts that i have here i mean you can if you want but you don't have to yeah, use it's your imagination yay if we've got any going on in the discord So now we got kind of like the basic pose down. She's kind of silly. Maybe she can look down on us and kind of stick her tongue out a little bit, you know, because she's uh, goofy like that. Hmm. Maybe she can hold some sort of weird bomb, like a really weird bomb. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Hmm. Like a, a bomb with like a clown face on it or something. Oh, yeah. I'll stick with that. Bomb with a clown face. I don't even know what, like a, <laughs> it would be like a grenade, but I'm thinking like the general shape of the grenade. So it has the, the pen. Does it mm -hmm. look like that, you think? Oh yeah, I guess if you're going for like a more modern kind of looking grenade, yeah. <laughs> okay. So she can have like a belt here. Let's just flip this. So I need. I might have skewed my vision a bit, so I need <laughs> to make sure that I'm not drawing like a weird. Oh, we've got someone who's following who's following along with you as a challenge, so they're doing the same prompts that you are. That's fun. Nice. Uh, and then. 
40 oh Fosher is doing the enigmatic time traveler that'll be fun nice if you're uh, when you're done you should share it with us on on socials or in the discord or wherever you may be in the discord in the dis- no, discord 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 Goofy R uh, hat, you know. Yeah. He's got the wand here. Nice. I kind of want her to hold a grenade, kind of like a, like an, I don't know, like you would hold an app, uh, uh, like uh, an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just said like, hold a grenade like an apple, but like, I don't know, you can hold <laughs> just... an apple any way you like. <laughs> <laughs> almost like the sort of, uh, I'm picturing almost like the Shakespearean skull kind of hold. Yeah. You know, it's like, pop that out in front. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm. <laughs> to throw or not to throw? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> to bamboozle or to get bamboozled? <laughs> I like to hold my apples like I hold my grenades. <laughs> <laughs> As long as it's like not in, as long as it's not in your mouth, you know, I think you're pretty good. Oh, Floyer wants to know if you prefer drawing, uh, if you prefer drawing, like female characters or male characters. Uh, I, I prefer drawing female characters. Um, yeah, women are just better. Uh, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no thought needed to go into that whatsoever. Yeah. It's so natural. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I I've been trying to get better at drawing men i can draw men no problem but it's just mm. uh the female figure um it's i think it's i think it's maybe maybe it's just me being biased but i think it's a bit easier to draw uh women doing fun expressions um yeah do you know do you know why that is or do you have like a, a thought as to why that might be or i think it has just something to do with uh like men tend to be more stoic and so they, they have more subtle uh, emotion. Like usually you see like men being angry and such, uh, or maybe a bit goofy, but um, yeah, I think that's probably kind of it. I mean, you do see a lot of like different, very cool and whimsical um, male character designs. Like that tend to be the most diverse in comparison to women in general. It is changing. For yeah. example, in uh, if you look at Overwatch, like the male character designs in terms of body diversity and personality they are more diverse than the the girls there which is a bit of a shame at the same time because it's like well the girls are mostly just kind of pretty and that's about it um so it would be fun to to see a lot of like differences in in female character designs but i think just in general um i like to see a lot of like pretty female character designs at the same time and you know, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by trying to be like, oh, I want to stand out and make original character designs. And then I'm no different than than the character designs that's being shown in Overwatch, like a mm. bunch of pretty women and then super diverse <laughs> dudes. <laughs> yeah. 
I feel a lot of people do not explore the bodies of women enough. You get so many different shapes, it can be pretty... You can be pretty and buff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's what I'm liking. Like the, Now we are actually seeing women with different body proportions and mm -hmm. kind of different expressions as well. Now we're, we're seeing a lot, lot... Like you wouldn't see very muscular women, for example, like 10, 10, 20 years ago, but now we're definitely seeing it. Yeah. And people saying that, well, that's unrealistic. It's like, well, 90% of like the character designs in our like, Overwatch are also super unrealistic. Realistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at like 90% of the character's wastes and you'll see that that's pretty unrealistic. E. What if she has like a big hat? I don't know, man, I'm, I'm being silly. A hat that has like a, that's angry or something. Oh, yeah. He's so, angry because uh, there's no goofing, at least not yet. She or there's too much grenade, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me think. Make this fun here. Maybe some clown powder instead. I try to be careful doing patterns in the line art because it's a lot easier to do that in the coloring stage than in the line art stage, even though I'm not planning to color today. Mm. But um, let's say if I do take it to the next stage and I do finish this in my own time, I do find it easier to color, uh, no, uh, add patterns in the color stage because I can like slap it on and experiment there instead of doing it here. Yeah, that makes sense. Find a pattern on Google or something. Mm. I suppose as well, you know, there's more like there's more important things to focus on at this point like the actual character more than the pattern on, on their costume yeah yeah i can do i can do something simple but yeah nothing mm -hmm. too elaborate unless unless the the pattern has like a physical shape like it sticks out um i'm trying to think like maybe some like flowers or something that can kind of be like a, a form of pattern but if it's like a yeah. pattern like a tattoo or something like that then uh since that's just flat i don't really have to draw it in i can wait until later maybe yeah. scribble it in to see um how it looks like on the composition of the body so to speak speaking of it could be cool if she did have a tattoo but then i would prefer her to have more exposed skin somewhere because i think otherwise would be too busy yeah yeah, you wouldn't want to put anything on her face. Oh, on something. She's wearing a sorting hat from Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> <laughs> She's just stolen it from Hogwarts and just ran with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Floyd wants to know what rank you are in Overwatch if you play it. No, I don't play it. I used to before, but I just really like the designs there, that's all. Yeah. I think it's just really well done. A lot of the concepts are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, shout out to Ness Kane. That's some amazing art for, for that game. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. there's definitely there's definitely something about a big monkey scientist that that you gotta love, you know. Absolutely. Okay. I think uh actually her pelvis is getting a bit detached here, so I'm just gonna remove whatever that is there. And oh I see. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of a silly problem here. She hasn't got any hips. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have a proper hip here. What have mm. I done? So I'm gonna actually redo the leg here and do it right. I'm not afraid to make big changes or erase large parts if I do make mistakes because I'd rather uh, fix it now than be in a refinement stage and then realize that, oh, I made a big mistake and then I, now I have to 
spend another hour trying to fix it when I can just literally spend what like five minutes fixing it now yeah well yeah if you're gonna do it now's the time that's what it's for right absolutely <laughs> she's a <laughs> she's a slytherin maybe is that like a is that like wouldn't a be how, house? she's like a mix between slytherin and hufflepuff like silly but not in a good way yeah, I was going to say, it's like, it, I didn't know if there was a house that's like more you know, silly, goofy, silly, goofy guys. There we go. Uh, this feels more right now. Okay. I'm happier. Okay. Good. <laughs> I didn't recognize that that was you for a second. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the heck was that? <laughs> Third man has joined. Yeah. It was Luigi. I don't know if that sounded like Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> it did not sound like Luigi. <laughs> oh, what did it sound like? No, nah, like it did kind of sound like Luigi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very cute. Very cute bomb. Yeah. Oh, I gotta yeah, that... be honest with you, this one was a tricky prompt. Mm -hmm. I could not find like something that was standout ish, other than like, okay, she's gonna be kind of like a ballerina slash jester mm -hmm. with a big hat. Uh, and she's kind of silly. What else? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got like, uh, who was it? Floyer said in the chat that it, the, the prompt kind of has like jinx vibes. Mm. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm glad I didn't go full Jinx then. Uh, imagine, just carbon copied it. Yeah. I want this element here on the hat to kind of come down, swirl down. I think that might be cool. Because I was thinking of Jinx and I'm like, huh, what element of Jinx can I put in if I do have to put it in? And she has the twin tails coming down and they're really nice how they come down and they, like, they're very dominant in her design. Yeah. So I think maybe something like that here might be cool. There's uh there's another character this prompt kind of reminded me of and it was uh from one of my favorite JRPGs, uh Tales of Bazaria. There's a character called Maggie Lou in it that mm. uh has a kind of like uh she's she is a witch and she kind of has that circus jester kind of uh aesthetic but her skirt isn't a tutu it's just a bunch of books her design is a bunch of books no her skirt is a bunch of books but oh, her, okay. like like the rest of her design is uh almost like a jester she has like that jester hat on and uh like diamonds on her torso and stuff like that. It's a really mm. cool, it's a really cool design. What's it called again? I want to um, switch it up. The character is Maggie Lou from Tales of Bazaria. Maggie Lou, Tales of Bazaria. Yeah. Oh, I've seen this character before. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Nice. Okay. I'm gonna leave this character here now because I've spent uh, too long. So I need to move on to the next prompt. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of gets the idea. I kind of like it. If I want to refine it, I probably have to spend maybe if ten more minutes, twenty more minutes sketching it, and then I can pop of it and see what I can do. But anyway, uh, Missy. Circus, which because I don't want to write mischievous again. <laughs> um, enigmatic Dragon Queen. Oh, that could be that could be a fun one. That could be a fun one. So enigmatic is basically another word for mysterious, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So. So you can you can take this like one of two ways, right? You could take this more creature direction, or you could take it more sort of human, right? Or like a more humanoid direction. Although it's got dragon in it, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to make it a dragon. That's true. You're right about that. I don't have to. But I was thinking of like a like a lizard girl. To yeah. be honest with you, yeah, I was, and I was kind of rooting for that. Yeah, follow follow your dreams. Don't okay. let your dreams be dreams, Matt. <laughs> I'll follow my <laughs> dreams, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jin. Uh, so let me go. I'm thinking if she's enigmatic. A character that I kind of think about is LeBlanc from League of Legends. The blank is kind of evil though, um, but she's definitely like enigmatic or mysterious if you want. Um, I don't want like when I'm thinking enigmatic or mysterious, I was thinking of like someone as powerful as like a queen, right? I'm thinking, okay, so she's definitely going to be, maybe be bold or um, I, I don't because the tricky part she's definitely gonna look assertive the way that I think about her in my head right now she's like or she's kind of looking down on us uh she's having her uh, hand up close to her face or to her to her chest or something like that um trying to describe that kind of enigmatic feeling okay I'm gonna go for that and I definitely want her composure I want her to be composed that's what I want yeah But I want her costuming to be somewhat, not shrouding her, but she isn't open. Yeah. She's, she's like hiding something. She's hiding something indeed. She's going to be hiding her dragon toenails. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay to get, you got to pay to see this. <laughs> That's a study session premium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nancy, how much? Uh, too much. Too much for you to afford. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, Alex is saying we have, is it this prompt that we have in like three franchises? Daenerys from Game of Thrones, Alex Straza from WoW, and the one from League of Legends. The one from League the of Legends. The one from League of Legends. Yeah. I might do like a mixture of of all that. Like Alex Straza from uh, Wolf of I mean, she is, she doesn't look like a dragon when she's in the human form because she has a human form right for those that don't know uh but she definitely looks she looks mean even when she's in human form like she looks beautiful but she doesn't look like a good person mm. but definitely mysterious for sure um okay i feel like the upper half is going to be very important and then the this part's going to be very important but everything here i'm going to leave pretty simple like the midsection is just a silhouette for the most part Sure. Uh, that's kind of like what I'm thinking. So she's going to, yeah. So, because this, her whole body, since she's like going to be enigmatic, I want to, to be not necessarily modest, but it's just, she's, she's not showing much skin in the like midsection and maybe even in her, in her arms much. Onyxia. Who's Onyxia? Was that was I thinking of Onyxia? Christina mentioned instead of, of Alexstrasza. 
I think I was actually mixing up Alexstrasza and Anixia, actually. That's so embarrassing, um... considering the fact that I've been playing World of Warcraft for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I haven't seen this design before. Yeah, big, big purple, big purple dragon on Ixia. Ah, so you're going for like a, an over-the-shoulder kind of yeah. look? Yeah. Yes, sir. I need to get the expression out as soon as I can. I might even go for like the, the first thing I kind of... Maybe I'm going for like stereotypical, but it gets the message done. Oh, we did the Hearthstone cinematic featuring Anixia. Yeah, I knew that. That's why I said I know exactly who Anixia is. <laughs> the cinematic was looking cool, though. Mm-hmm. So how long does, uh, we've got a question saying, how long does it take for you to normally refine your sketches? Ooh, depends guess... on how complex it is. Yeah, I was about right? to say, yeah. Yeah, because if I have a lot of elements, uh, like I'm not the type of guy that likes to over design too much. Like I've been trying to get, <laughs> actually, it's gonna sound funny. I'm I've been trying to get better at over designing on purpose to see if like how far I can push a design. Mm. But I feel like I've kind of like failed trying to make an over-designed design look good, at least the way that I like it. But uh, yeah, if it is very, if it does have a lot, it can take me anywhere between three to four hours, maybe, to finish that like refined sketch, if that makes any sense. And that's just like line art, right? And the line art isn't even a clean in the end, of, at the end, it's just... You can see more, pretty much everything. Uh, if it's more simple, then it can take me an hour, maybe two hours, you know. Depends on the style as well. If I'm going more realistic, then I have to take into consideration making sure that I'm actually, uh, you know, maybe I need to get more references, right? Making sure my proportions and the anatomy is correct and all that. Okay, not gonna. Uh, I'm getting too caught up on the face. Need to work on this. You have quite a range of styles on your art station. Do you have one that you sort of prefer over anything else? You know, I'm I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling to find an identity because <laughs> I, cha I change. I like to experiment with different things all the time, uh -huh. and I, I feel like. Uh, recently I was like thinking damn Matt like you can do a lot of different things but like can you stick to just one thing for once and, <laughs> you know and it works great if I, when I'm working with clients because I can switch I can switch things up on the, on the fly right so if they yeah. if you tell me like we kind of need this look here and we need to fit that style it's like no problem I can do that but when it comes to me uh, the the style that like a lot of, I like a lot of different things, but the thing that I, if there's like one style that I truly love and I can like always work with and never get bored with it, I think I'm going to have a hard time finding that right now, to be honest with you. 
honest, uh, honest take, honest take. Man, gotta, gotta admire it. Uh, like, do you, do you find this something that you just constantly fall back into, though? Or? Mm. I think recently I've been falling into this kind of semi-stylized... Yeah. Kind of Joe Mad slash Art of Mackie type of look. If anyone knows, uh, you know, uh, most people know Joe Mad. Like, he's a legendary type of guy. Like, very heavily influenced by, like, Western comic books look. But also... Has a lot of inspiration from anime, like uh, in, uh, Eastern styles at the same time. So he mixes the two and does that very well. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would say I'm, I'm similar. Like I, I really like to mix up like Eastern and Western styles. Like I, f I feel like Eastern is very good with, uh, is very good with expression mm. and uh, beauty but the west is very good with shape design and very good with um uh, gestures like uh if you look at old cartoons and modern comic book artists they're like insane with the gestures like manga artists are pretty decent at that but i, I feel like personally from what i've seen like if you look at matteo scalera like that guy's uh, amazing at, at gesture drawing if you look at his characters they're super dynamic and beautiful but, you know, I might be a bit biased, you know, uh, that, that's like a personal take. Mm. If you disagree, you're that's completely fine. I thought you were going to say, if you disagree, you know, you're wrong, but... <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I, I'm not going to, I'm not a black and white type of guy. I'm a gray guy, you know. Nice. I'm a gray guy. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty interesting to to think about if you know, the the different art styles, like the Western art style, as you say, if if it does lean more towards gestures, then you know, I, I'm interested in like the why more than like the the history behind that. You no, know? the why? Kind of what, what, can you elaborate on that? Well, like, like, why is it that the the Western art style might uh, favor gestures and poses, as opposed to like what you were saying about the the more Eastern style, favoring mm. more. Uh, what is it you said? Uh, more like emotive, like faces and stuff. Is that what you said? That that kind of thing, like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, how did it? How did it get to that point? You know, what's the what's the reasoning behind that? That's what I want to know. Uh, it could be, it's, I would say, artist influence on culture. Yeah. Because artists look at other artists and they look at the greats and then they kind of follow that path. And you see that, you know, great artists are inspired by other great artists. And they kind of follow that similar path down the line. And so if you, like prior to the internet, let's say, right, where it was looking at art, diverse set of art was less available uh, you will look at like the great artist from your country or local in countries right and then you would uh, apply that now today we're going to be more influenced by many different artists from many different countries and that's why we see so many different styles being mi mixed up yeah. together and kind of get the, getting this kind of i'd say beautiful frankenstein yeah. uh, mix of of art and styles because we look at like stuff from the Russians and we look at stuff from the French and we look at stuff from the Americans and then others from Japan and China and things like that. And then there's like preference as well, right? Mm -hmm. like what people pr prefer and what they prefer to look at, etc. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at a lot of people now and there, a lot of them are influenced by like manga artists and like anime art as well that's a lot of people's like uh jumping on point to mm -hmm. to art and illustration i think mm. yeah i think it's a it's a cool time to 
it's, it's a, a cool time to look at, at the art world and see where it's going and as you say all the influences that people are getting absolutely absolutely i mean i i was inspired by media first so mm -hmm. i was looking at world of warcraft that was like the i'd say the the big thing yeah. i believe was the big thing that was like wow you know that and i started drawing stuff and i tried to copy stuff from the the guidebook that came with the cd that had mm -hmm. um they had like uh how to get through the world they had like some advice some tips and stuff how the classes worked and then they included artwork like some some stuff from the the classes and some of the races and stuff nice and i saw like the the human uh the human female the the male dwarf and stuff like that and they were the artwork was just amazing for its time at least and uh yeah i wanted to copy that and i couldn't do it of course i was super frustrated but i tried to do it again and again and again until I kind of went like all right this is good enough let's uh, do something else <laughs> let's play world of warcraft yeah man i i need to i need to play more wow <laughs> just after me saying that i inspired you to play wow uh, I always think that. <laughs> and then you don't, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's better that you don't. Don't do it. <laughs> don't get into it. <laughs> but also, Blizzard, if you're listening in, um, that, I'm just saying that for Jaden's mental health and making sure that he gets his job done. It's nothing against you, okay? I love you, Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, we love Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Alex is Alex is upset when he did his study session. We were talking about favorite Pokemon instead of oh, the, yeah? the more deep topics. Yeah. <laughs> so Matt, what's your favorite Pokemon? You want to know something? Oh, don't tell me you don't have one. <laughs> no, I never played Pokemon. Oh. Man. I never had Pokemon when I was a kid, man. <sighs> Come on. No, man, it's not my fault that we didn't have stuff like that in Norway. It was never a culture for it. <laughs> what was like, the people like? People talking about Pokemon and stuff. Like, they grew up with that stuff, and I had no idea. It didn't exist in my brain. It didn't oh. exist in my ch childhood. What did What did all the, like, what did all the kids play then? You know, what were all the kids playing? Played tag and stuff. Like, you went outside. Playing tag? <laughs> you went outside? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no oh hell no <laughs> man you were touching grass man <laughs> no way <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know man i like yeah I, I i wouldn't say that we had any cards or anything like growing up but mm. anyway to answer your question because i was like pretty much avoiding it um isn't it like you have charizard Squirtle, Squirtle and... is, is one, yeah. Squirtle and then Bulbasaur. Is that the th those are like the three starting ones, right? Uh, I think they're, I they're all. I mean, I think so. Charmander and Squirtle, I think, are for the, from the same game, but Bulbasaur is from one of the uh, later ones. What's I the think. three starting ones? In Gen One. Chat will tell me. What were the starters from Gen 1? You don't know? I didn't play Gen 1. Okay. Oh, they're all the starters from Gen 1? All right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the, what, what is the three first? So it was, so yeah, it was Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur. So yeah, you were right. Well, I mean, all the cute, cool kids pick the Charizard, Char Charmander, not Charizard, Charmander, who becomes mm. Charizard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's the that's the cool one right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was more of a I was more of a Bulbasaur kind of guy. Yeah, you were that kind of like weird guy. That, yeah, I was the kid. I was the weird kid that picked Bulbasaur. Yeah. You tried to stand out. You tried to be cooler. <laughs> <laughs> now my favorite my favorite starter and my favorite Pokemon is uh, is Mudkip because he's just adorable. Is that a starter? Uh, yeah, it's from. Uh, Gen 3, I think. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I... Hmm. Isn't... Uh, Charizard isn't even a dragon, right? Because they're, like, different types. And then Charizard is, like, not a dragon, even though he breathes fire and has wings. 
Yeah, I think I, I think Charizard became a dragon type later on. My, okay. my Pokemon knowledge isn't super hot. I only know like one one Pokemon game really. Mm. He's just fire. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's just fire. That's mm. it. He's, He's just, just fire. fire. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, he is totally fire. To he totally, he, yeah, definitely. Okay, I've been neglecting this lower half for like, I mean, there's really nothing down here that I want to focus on, but I should put in something. Maybe like a piece of the, if her leg's coming down here, then we would see it like a little bit of ankle and a bit of foot, you know? <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. Oh my Lord. Well, you did take her in more of a humanoid direction. I did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I totally lied to myself. <laughs> you let me get into your head. <laughs> you got, like uh, your subconscious infected my brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a joke I am. What a joke. I thought I had free will, but in reality... Uh, I'm the puppet master. <laughs> That foot looks a little bit jank right now, but you know, if I do, if I do pick this and design, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll fix it. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that's annoying me. Okay. Just make it tiny. Okay. There we go. Uh, worked on this for a while now. Yeah. You got three so, pretty good ones. I got three little random designs and we call this the enigmatic dragon queen. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna line them up actually. So let me actually turn off the text and let me line them up and then we can make a vote. Nice. We can have the chat make a vote. Yeah. I'm gonna number them, of course, so don't worry. Yeah, type out the, the the prompt that you like the most. No. <laughs> it takes forever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Put this on multiply. I may need to restart my Photoshop, so um, because of the RAM. So once we have decided, I'll pick the one. Pick sure. The one. <clears throat> Alex votes Dragon Queen before the vote. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Come on. take your votes in the chat. Only one vote. You can't vote. Uh, yeah, you can't vote more than once. Yeah. So pick one, and then I'll take that one. One, three, two, three. One, two, three, two, two. Two. Yo, make a poll. Ah, this is way more fun. Look at all of the like. Look at all the funky numbers. Can we make up. a poll? Shall we do a poll? We can give it. We can do like a straw poll. All right. I think that might be better. Uh, I see a lot of ones in the chat. Chat being kind of thirsty. Yeah. Classic, classic chat. Classic chat. <laughs> classic Chad. Classic Chad. There we go. There's a, a link in the chat. Get your votes in so we can actually comprehend what the votes are. Yeah. Um, can I see the results without voting? Uh... Yes, oh, I can. I, yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's so it's so close. I'm gonna put my vote in. Put your vote in. Oh. Oh, Christine's oh. already voted, so I can't. How rude. Everyone's voting on the dragon lady just so you fix the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> On my way to create multiple accounts, it goes by IP, Floyer, you can't cheat. The survey is uh, eight game. All right, I think uh, countdown from Ooh. 10. Yeah. 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, Ooh. five, four, three, two, one. All okay. right. It seems to be that the mischievous, Ooh. mischievous girl is the one that takes the vote. Yeah, the dark yeah, horse. I wasn't the the, the what? Dark horse. It's like a, a, it's like the challenger who you least expected to win. You know. Is that is that a reference to something? No, it's a saying. I'm pretty sure it's a saying. I is that that's a British saying. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Dark horse, awesome. a candidate or competitor who little is known but who unexpectedly wins. There, there you go. So, what's that? that was a Brit bong saying. Bonk. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a bit because I need to restart my Photoshop. So, hold on one second. Me cheating as always. I have you know, I have never cheated at anything in my entire life. Not even like Monopoly. No cheaters in chat. No cheaters in chat. Yeah, no cheaters. Anyway, if we'd have cheat, if I'd have cheated, I would have made my vote win. My vote was number two. I like the the little forest dude. He was fun though, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. All right, let me just reshare my screen. Yep. Window, photo, photo, photo scrap. Okay, so I need to again. I, I had some trouble with her design, so I need to actually go in and uh, yeah, fix some things, and then I'll yeah, I'll actually go in and get started with like some cleaner line art. So, um, let me make a duplicate just in case. And let's analyze this real quick. Um, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of like medium shapes in here. And um, like there, her hat is cool. It's got a nice big shape, but there's a lot of like medium shapes in here and I need to break it up better. So I either need to have more small or I need to have at least like one big shape, which breaks it up. So something that can kind of cover this area more, um, because I feel like these like elements in here isn't helping me. So I'm going to remove this for now and uh, see what I can do. Maybe one like that, or is that too silly? Oh, well, like half a, like half a tutu. Half a tutu, yeah. Vi from League of Legends has half a tutu in one of her designs, I think. Mm. I'm not super up to date on my League of Legends character like skins i played league of legends for like i don't know 30 hours bonked some dudes as mordekaiser and what do you mean 30 hours 30 hours in one go oh no nah, dude nah. <laughs> go go full degenerate mode and just... <laughs> could you imagine the amount of salt man i could not recover from that i need uh yeah i would need to hydrate after that yeah Hmm. Okay, now we try that. I have to experiment a bit. I don't think the bombs are working in my favor here. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe a pouch. A pouch full of bombs? Yeah, that'd be fun. A pouch full of tricks and traps. Tricks and traps. Rips and traps. Ba, ba, ba. Don't uh, don't forget if you're sort of following along or. Doing your own uh, prompts, we'd love to. We'd love to see what you're doing. 
so share it on our discord or uh, on twitter or instagram or any other social media of your choice we are on a lot of them we love to see it we do love to see it we even have facebook i know oh my goodness it's pretty crazy how can you even you know so... i lost my facebook account right no yeah i lost it lost my passport no passport Your passport <laughs> i lost my passport <laughs> yeah. i lost my password and uh, i tried i wanted to for some reason there's this like whole system to try to try and get you back in and it sent like an like an authentication to my email after like the process of like sending like help to my friends about it and it never sent me anything on my email and it didn't work again and uh i'm stuck <laughs> so, oh man there's nothing i can do about it that's yeah that's rough sag hope that doesn't happen on instagram <laughs> oh man yeah that would be the worst that happened to a, a fella i knew Oh, Lost no. like uh, seventy thousand right off the bat. Whoa! Or like art station as well. Imagine. Oh my god! It really goes to show how much uh, how much power it is behind having like certain accounts, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Some platforms. Mm -hmm. You just forget your password, or you, you don't do. By the way, check your passwords, and it's true. You know, get. Uh, you know, write it down somewhere as well, somewhere safe, so you keep it, and then uh, make a new password if it's old. That's always smart. Yeah. A wise man once said, "Keep it secret, keep it safe. Um, take the ring to Mordor and throw it in a volcano." Yeah, do that too. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Alex says uh, he has an actual question for you as opposed right. to a theoretical one. Uh, how does the big, medium, small rule go in concept art? What thoughts go through your head when designing formula or uh, when designing formula or anything practical? Basically applying big, medium and small, right? Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that the, there's like a, different ways you can apply big, medium, medium and small. But the way you can look at it is basically you have uh, one big shape, which takes up the majority of the space of the design and that big shape doesn't have a lot of too much complexity to it then you have a few medium shapes and then many small shapes which makes up the least amount of space on, in the design so we can have like little small elements in here right um usually i think about big and mediums first and then i leave the small shape uh last because the small shapes are i see them as details and you can kind of once you zoom in, right, you can also play with, because I look at big, medium, and small uh, infinitely. So if I zoom into this like little grenade here, I can also apply big, medium, and small here. So like the big shape can be the actual body of the grenade. And let me actually change change it because I don't actually like the grenade. So we have the the grenade like this, right? So it kind of looks like an, like, oh, maybe we can make an egg shape. That could be funny. So we have like an egg shaped grenade. I have the cap on the top. This is the, uh, this is a, so that's like two small shapes and we can have medium shape for the mouth. Let me add some perspective onto the eye. So I make sure that looks kind of good and some more small shapes. I would consider that that round thing here more like a medium than anything, but yeah. And the reason for why it's important, it's not really important. It's a design theory, mm -hmm. but if you apply it, generally it tends to work. It's like a tool. So if you want to make your pieces look more interesting, you don't have to have big, medium and small, but generally when you apply it, it tends to look good. So it's more like if you ever feel stuck and you need to analyze like I was earlier and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, 
I wanted to uh, simplify this area and try to have more like a clear big, medium, and small here. So I have more like complexity here, more simplicity here, and I can add like some small, some more small medium shapes. And this can be like a larger shape here, which breaks it up better in my opinion. So that's how I think about it generally. And I, yeah, there's a, I think that big, medium, and small can be applied in more than just shapes, but also with line, also with colors and value. But I won't get into that, as, as, um, even in this stream, because it can be, it can be a lot, I think. But uh, a good thing to keep in mind of. Much appreciated. Good. Amazing. Wow, they're so helpful. I can't help but help people, you know. I know. Let me add some belt elements, making sure that the straps and stuff here are not just random. Usually I like to make the buckle a little bit more interesting than just like a, a mm. classic buckle, but actually, I don't know, make it stand out, make it feel like it's more personal to the character than just being a, a, a general regular old buckle. Yeah. You know? Would a would a quirky person like this have a boring old belt buckle? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Hmm. Maybe she, if she has. Hmm. Okay. I think this might be fun. Add some asymmetry to it. So I, I want to add some shorts to her. Uh. So it could be like this, and then this can go down, and then she has thigh highs, and then I wanted uh, thigh high socks. So this one can <laughs> kind of wrinkle down at the bottom. Can be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Damn, somebody's running up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, there's Emra going down the stairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Didn't... a little kid. Like... <laughs> yeah, a little kid at Christmas time. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> How old is the character? <laughs> this character mm. here? Yeah. Oh, mm. I don't even think about that. Maybe like in her 20s? Yeah, like mid, mid 20s. I know that some people really like to get into like specifics about character. Like this person needs to have this eye color and they're this age. <laughs> And they're this tall and that, that type of stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'll start to think about that a bit later. Yeah. I have like a rough estimate for like age, I guess. If it's like a dad, it's like, well, a dad is can be in their 20s. But it's like if you look for like the classical type of like older dad, um, 30s, 40s, maybe 40s. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, like. Kind of depends on what type of archetype you want as well. Like Kratos is like, you know, the old dad archetype with like, yeah. their, it goes on adventure with their kids. So you have like Kratos, uh, you, you have um, Joel, you know, that type of deal. Mm -hmm. It kind of diff the, the dad who's kind of difficult to, to figure out is kind of mysterious. Like the grandpa like, from up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's fun. Yeah. All right. I think I've figured out most of what I want from the design. I think it's all about. Yeah. Okay. From here, I'll just uh, turn on the opacity. And this is like a recent thing that I've done. Usually, I just um, keep it as is, like right now. And I just draw in the same layer. But recently, I've been. Uh, playing around with some inking. So I'll do some inking. Having fun with this brush here. I made it myself. Ooh. It's just um, 
it's literally just if i make it big you can see all the the round brush that I've just scribbled in and then it's just like a paper texture um that you just have on photoshop it's just a paper texture that, that i turned on um but i now th this one is just flattened that's it so there's something really special with it other than that it is uh it doesn't have a transfer on, it's just shape dynamics and texture, and that's it. And then uh, some good draftsmanship. That's what makes it good. Yeah. 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 And this is my favorite part, like refining and working on the face. I'm a I can never I never man I I can never get enough of drawing faces, man. It's my favorite part of every design. Uh, it's almost like it's your job. Oh, damn, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's something it's something Leone says a lot. You know, you, you compliment him on something, he's like, yeah, dude, it's almost like it's my job. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's facts, though. Can't lie about that. Mm -hmm. Can we include the good draftsmanship in the next brush pack? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's a that's a fair point. I don't know. As soon as as soon as we figure out how to transfer skills into a brush pack, then we'll do it. Not that anyone here needs it, I'm sure. Honestly, um, I don't think, I think most people don't actually need brush packs. They don't need brushes, man. Brushes are nice, but like the OG brushes is the hard round brush and the soft round brush. That's all you need, really. Yeah, it seems if you like- you look a... at a lot of my art, it has that in it. Yeah. It seems like a lot of, like, a lot of the time you can make a brush out of pretty much anything you want, you know, like, Leone has made a brush out of, out of my face before. Hmm. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> that, well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit, it's a silly brush. That's not a brush that you use for anything other than maybe like stamping your face some <laughs> randomly somewhere. <laughs> yeah. He used, he, he's used my face and Christina's face for line art before. Oh, there you know. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge, or it's just like <laughs> maybe I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't think to ask the reason why. Sometimes it's better not to know. You know, sometimes uh, we spend so much time thinking about how we can do something, but we don't actually stop to think why. Oh, we got another. We got another question. All right, I love the questions. Mm -hmm. um, what project are you working on right now, if you're allowed to say? Um, and what project has been your favorite to work on? So I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be client related, right? It doesn't specify, but doesn't it, specify. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I, okay. So let's say any project, right? Not necessarily client. Um, when it comes to clients, I don't think I can mention anything. Yeah. Other than that, I worked on something like last year with uh, Phoenix, which was very fun. It was a lot of fun, but a lot of work. I was pulling a lot, a lot of all-nighters on it, but it was a very fun project. Can't talk about it though, <laughs> until something happens with it and it comes out. But um, like personal projects that I've worked on, I mean. I really enjoyed. Are you laughing, man? What's so funny? No, uh, Christina. <laughs> Christina put in chat that your default answer should be working on Moon Colony study sessions. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Just not be myself and try and like. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll erase everything that I said. Uh, Moon Colony has always uh, been like my favorite thing to work on. Yeah. Moon Colony study sessions. That's my favorite project. Mm. End of discussion. <laughs> Happy. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. We've got okay. the sound. We've got the sound clip now. You can, you know, you can. Uh... Can move on. Yeah, we, yeah. Can you say can, what I actually you want can to say. You can say what you actually want to say. Now, yeah. <laughs> so I think that the thing 
the project that I really enjoy working on, personal project actually, was I am split between the October Gang, which is one of my best pieces on our station, and I really enjoyed it. And it really, I think the popularity comes from the part because I enjoyed working on it so much. And it's just like a random project that I started on during October. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, a second project that I really enjoyed as well was Dragon's Rise, the mm. challenge on our station, because it just forced me to just be efficient and create cool designs quickly. And uh, it was more about creating cool designs than just making something pretty. And that 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 was what's so fun about it. And I, and I think like personally, I'm trying to just get better at uh, being more comfortable at picking random prompts and making sure it looks good. Because I feel like every time I work with clients, they give me some of these like random prompts or these random briefs. I'm like, how am I supposed to make this look good or interesting? And I make the most interesting looking characters based on off of those like random prompts. Um, because if I if I give myself some some basic something basic like let's say a knight like okay i draw a knight everybody has seen a knight yeah okay what about an orc well everybody's seen an orc before okay what about like an elf hunter like everybody has seen that like nobody <laughs> wants to see that everybody has seen that okay well what about something random like a like a, a samurai forest guardian like nobody sees that that's pretty interesting or like a i think it, it wasn't samurai i did one very recently which was a cyborg forest samurai and that was a lot of fun to work on that's pretty cool um and then i uh let's say this character right here is a lot of fun to work on because i wouldn't normally think of doing something like this you know mm -hmm. i would go for like the safe option or like the, the comfortable comfortable option yeah and you gotta you gotta push your boundaries you know you gotta push yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes yeah exactly So what I'm doing now, just for context, is that I'm just going in with uh, with the pen tool and I can design more on top of my sketch. So if there's like something loose that I have that I'm not really sure about, like for example, in the hand here, mm -hmm. um, I'm comfortable with drawing with just the pen. So for example, I, I don't necessarily need the sketch underneath to draw like and make a full character out of ink if I wanted to. Um, but this sketch certainly helps it and speeds up the process by like, I don't know, three times, four times for sure. Uh, but I can go in the hand here and I can kind of figure out like the certain parts. And then, so we got the pinky finger here. This is the ring finger. And then she can have like the middle finger or maybe the uh, parts of her index finger right here and that's about it like okay i kind of figured that out let's continue where we left off basically so this is her wand but the wand is very very simple right now so i might maybe simplicity is the best i was thinking of like a wand you know the ones that have black with the white oh yeah classic the classic wand mm -hmm. so no reason to make it over complicated uh we have a, a question from gecko boy uh nice name it's a nice name i love a gecko um do you have some tips on how to not get too hyper fixated on line details like when you zoom in as they tend to overdo their lines when looking closer mm. uh keep your brush size a little bit larger or just work from a don't zoom in too much basically so work from around this distance if you tend to struggle uh, and move around while you draw. So if you have a tendency to work in one area for too much and you feel like you're just like pixel pushing, just move away from that area and move to the next so that you don't get too precious about that area. And once you make a stroke, like I tried to make a stroke and then just get, get it done and over with. Like if I can read it from a decent distance, uh, then it's good because I can technically go in and perfect my lines everywhere but there's no point because i'm gonna read the whole design from around this distance here mm -hmm. so there's no reason for me to zoom in too much 
unless I want the viewer to actually zoom in in this area when they're, let's say if I post it online somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, but that just means more time. And I don't want to spend too much time with this. I wanna, like, if I if you can see most of the details and it looks good from around here, I'm happy. Yeah, it's knowing the it's it's having that that viewing distance in mind, isn't it? And a lot of yeah. a lot of classic like classical painting is like that as well. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you not, can still see the brushstrokes. Yeah. It's not because they they know you're not going to be looking at it from like two feet away. You're going to be standing like six feet back or, or something like that looking at it. So, yeah, exactly. And I, in my opinion, I think some of those paintings are one of the best because they have the, the best energy in them. Mm. Overworked pieces tend to look quite stiff. Yeah. And I just say tend to, it's not necessarily the case, but I think this is why Sargent is so loved even today by digital artists because he was such an efficient digital Sargent was not a digital painter uh, Sargent was a traditional painter uh, but he was such an efficient traditional painter um, he a lot of people would just watch him paint like he was kind of like Kim Jun Ji uh, during his time period because he was so fun to look at because he would just make like a specific area of the piece, he would just do it super quickly within like five minutes and that hand would be done, you know? Um, yeah, it's so funny. Very efficient it, artist. It's funny you mentioned Sergeant. I just, as you like started to, to bring him up for you, I put a message in chat saying, Sergeant painting a whole realistic hand with three brush strokes. God yep. damn. God damn. You know, uh, great minds think alike, so. It's true. That means you're an official genius, Floyer. Good job. Top G. Um, Leo often struggles with the stage of adding details on outfits after they've uh, shaped out the sizes, or, like blocked everything out. Do you mm -hmm. have any advice on that? Uh, I would. Well, if you struggle, if you don't have it from your visual library and you struggle with it, mm -hmm. uh, get reference, you know. Um, Number two, don't overcomplicate it. Try something simple at first. Like if you struggle with folding, what is it that you're struggling with, right? Is it folds? Is it seams? Is it the, uh, like where buttons are supposed to be? Is it, uh, if things have the right lengths or not? Mm -hmm. um, what if there's any elements that's missing, right? Try to look for the functional uh, issues first. Like, is there anything about the clothing that would be uh, difficult for the character to be if they have a difficult part putting it on or how does this clothing actually work? How does it wrap around the character? Things like that. Um, but if you can't do it from imagination, get reference because there's no shame of doing that. And um, maybe do a few studies of it um, to kind of remember what the clothing kind of looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it could be any type. It could be a jacket. It could be coat could be a dress could be a specific part like a belt buckle can kind of be difficult to remember from first hand i i sort of needed to flip up my sketchbook look at some reference and actually study like okay how does a belt buckle work because mm -hmm. i know what a belt buckle is supposed to be but i just don't know how to draw it because i don't have it in my head really never took the time to understand it Do you uh, do do much sort of pencil on paper? You know, more traditional kind of work. You know, I wish I was that type of guy, but honestly, <laughs> I'm not. I rarely draw on paper unless I go to uh, life drawing. Okay. Which I do sometimes, and uh, yeah, I just kind of check my skills there, and that kind of makes me happy. Kind of updating my my traditional skills but in terms yeah. of like concepting or coming up with ideas i feel like it's just more efficient doing it digitally because i am faster digitally and it's just that sometimes i look at people's sketchbooks and they go like damn damn 
Yeah. I want to do it too. And then I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel that. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of just accepted my fate. I don't think I um I don't think I really do traditional unless I feel like I want a specific thing that I want to show traditionally or if I'm literally forced to do traditional like let's say computers don't exist anymore. Man. In 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 that kind of future that's well, I guess art would probably be one of the only things we'd have left. <laughs> you know? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's still maybe it's one of the things that we cannot prioritize. So if you're thinking about like a post-apocalyptic scenario, uh, I don't think I'll be drawing anymore. I think I'll be raiding or something. I'll be going out with, with my axe, and I'll be uh, not drawing like, for a long time. Just like your ancestors. <laughs> just like my ancestors. I'll grow a full beard. Yeah. I'll go out there with my axe and I'll start. I'll start Pil raiding pillaging. and pillaging. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Sail over to the UK, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll meet you again and have a beer. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Burn uh -huh, down, yeah, burn uh -huh, down, right, burn down right. my burn down my village, and then we'll have a beer. Sure, man. Why not? <laughs> what if these old masters are actually time travelers and came from like 2050 back in time? Damn. Imagine Michelangelo or Da Vinci using Photoshop. Do you think they would like it? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like they'd be too stuck in their old ways. What if they were a bit younger, like in their 20s or something? Uh, yeah, then they'd probably like it, yeah. Because they got that brain plasticity, as they say. Yeah, yeah. And they were still geniuses in their 20s, right? They were like crazy. Yeah. I think they'd look, I think Da Vinci would be a would be an IT guy. Actually, you might be right about that. Yeah, I, don't I think he would. He he did a lot of other stuff than just painting and drawing, you know. Mhm. Mm be a he would be a great engineer, I think. It would oh, be for like sure. a, he would mog Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and all those people. A bit too smart. It's Illuminati been, would have to take him down. He'd spend all his time arguing with people on Reddit. <laughs> nah, I think I think you're right though. I think he'd be like he'd give like Steve Jobs and stuff a, a run for their money. Yeah, 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 I think so too. Like I have zero blame plasticity. I've not learned anything since 2010. <laughs> <Yikes>. Oh my. <laughs> it's Alex, time to keep on, your man. head down and yeah, right. Time to study. Come on, man. Eat your veggies and start it's reading. Kind of All right, so I have no idea what the, the shoes are going to be funky, but I haven't actually constructed the shoes at all. So let me see. We, how much time do we have left, Jaden? Do you want to say we have around 10 minutes left? Yeah, yeah, that's look, yeah. that looks about right. Yeah, okay. I've not eaten vegetables since 2010 too, so maybe there's a connection. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, dearie me. Oh, my goodness. I have been eating... I've been on a vegetarian diet for like... Uh, how long now? For like three weeks, I think. Okay, cool. Um, and it's because I'm fasting at the moment, so I'm not eating any meat. But i got to be honest, it's been pretty good. I've been liking yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I've... I went through, or when I was at uni, I think I ate a lot more like vegan stuff, mostly because I couldn't be bothered to cook a lot, and vegan stuff is pretty easy to cook. Um, Just boil. Yeah, bam. pretty much. Yeah, but that was that was pretty good. I went to some restaurants as well and had some like vegan burgers. Mm. They were pretty tasty. 
Yeah, they've been getting better at that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. like, I've saw some like vegan pulled, like pulled, basically pulled pork, but vegan oh, style. Oh yeah, they use like jackfruit, I think, for that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what they had in THU, and people were saying, I can't tell the difference between this and pulled pork. Yeah. I was like, are you sh are you are you sure about that? Are you, are you sure? <laughs> I didn't try it because I was like skeptical because I was afraid they would have some chemicals in there to kind of synthesize me. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid. So I didn't even want to try. Mm. Like I'd rather have like an authentic vegetarian slash vegan dish than something that's trying to be meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping my tinfoil hat on. Mm. Oh, Laura had it when she was there said it was really good i think it was even better than meat oh careful the oh meat God. lovers out there are gonna come for you yeah there are people people are real passionate about eating meat yeah they they are man the whole war on that stuff is kind of cringe tbh mm. yeah i just want to i'm just gonna eat whatever whatever tastes good yeah, just do what you want. Mm -hmm. Easy. There are a lot of good vegetarian dishes, for example, stuffed mushrooms. <laughs> mm, I think I'm good. Stuffed mushrooms? Uh, yeah. What, what, like, what is stuffed mushrooms? Uh, they like... They like take a mushroom and I think they like flip it upside down and just put a bunch of like whatever in it. But I don't like mushrooms, so. Oh, come um, on, Jade. Mushrooms are good for you. I know. I, I have nothing against vegetables, but I just can't. I just don't like the taste of mushrooms. Although I got attacked about, I got attacked by saying this yesterday. I reckon that's why they brought it up. Mm. Mario is ashamed of me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I haven't eaten mushroom in a while. How do you say it? I probably should go to the store and buy some. What, what, what's the most common one called in English? Like we call it champignon here in Norway, but. Um, I don't really know what the what the most. Oh, of most course, I shouldn't ask you because you, yeah. you don't even eat. You're the worst them. person. <laughs> worst person to ask. Uh, let me Google it. If in doubt, Google it. Uh, oyster mushrooms? No, they don't. Oh. Look, they don't look all that common. But mm. in Brazil, it's also champ champign champignon. 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 <laughs> champignon. You want some champignon? Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that's the same here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, do you say champignon? Champignon. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Champignon. Portobello or button mushrooms. Yeah, we get those pretty often too. Oh my god, is that Christina in the background? It was, yeah. It was Christina coughing in the background. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know to like, I know to turn the mic down a little bit, you know, maybe for next time. <laughs> she put in chat, I tried to be quiet for so long. <laughs> <laughs> It's tough. If I turn the like, if I turn the mic volume down so it doesn't pick up the background noise, then people like say I'm too quiet. And then if I turn it up, they say I'm I'm too loud. Just don't speak so aggressively, man. Calm down. Oh yeah, I am known to be quite an aggressive speaker. Yeah. Mm. Christina's not breathing, not making any sort of movements. <laughs> <laughs> like a deer in headlights. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, ambient occlusion is basically my best friend when it comes to line art like this. Uh, so I can like, I don't know, something about adding some heavier line weight in certain areas uh, makes you focus in those areas more. And you can, you can technically add more, uh, like pull the viewer to certain areas by adding more ambient occlusion or heavier line art. So if I want to focus more on the hand, I'll add in heavier line art in the hand in here. And if I want you to focus more on the face, I'll put in some heavier, I mean, I keep hiccuping, come on, man. Um, I could put in some uh, heavier line art and ambient occlusion here as well, you know. Uh, oh, we have another question. Yay. Uh, when it comes to character design, how dynamic can a pose be while still being readable? I like to exaggerate on them according to the character's personality, but I never know when is too much. I'd say you can do as much as you want, honestly, mm -hmm. because when it comes to, uh, it, I'd say that it doesn't really matter too much if you cover certain parts of the body, if they're like arms are overlapping or like they're, you know, they're more hunched over. I wouldn't say that's such a big deal because you can make, you can design the character on a separate sheet and where you're showing more of them, like orthographics for for example or it can do like a three-quarter view where they're not really doing any specific pose they're just standing there so the original pose or the way that you present the character as you first design them is kind of like the the way to sell the character uh, it's like if this ex character is interesting and you are excited when you see them and you, th and you see like oh yeah this could i could see this character being in a animation or a video game or something that's kind of like the selling point. And then afterwards, you can then begin to uh, actually design parts of the character, whether that be the costume or patterns or anything like, like that on a separate sheet. Uh, do call outs if you need to as well. So it's not such a big deal. For example, when I was working with um, Phoenix Labs, I did a bunch of characters and they had some like, some of them had some fairly crazy poses um, where there were a lot a lot of them were like covered even did like a character just you weren't seeing the front you were seeing their back and they were like looking back at you and that was just to kind of sell the attitude of the character and they yeah they liked that stuff uh, but that was like very very early on in the um in pre-production so works really well if you're just trying to explore characters and find the mood but if they're trying to use the character as like, let's say an asset into a game, uh, it, gets, it starts to become more specific about what's asked of you. Oh yeah, you're just frozen. <laughs> You look pretty silly. You look pretty silly on my on my end. You look kind of nervous, actually, on my end. <laughs> I see. Uh. Oh, so they can still hear you. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? I don't, I'm not seeing it. There we go. Oh, they can hear better. You. Okay. Yeah, they can hear okay. me now. Okay. That's my bad. Um, yeah, I was just saying my camera, my camera died. So uh, I'm here as a ghost. Yeah. Um, but someone had a question. Shall I ask someone before we end the stream? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do, let's do one more. Um, so they said, uh, according to you, what's the best thing to put, uh, in a portfolio when we were a junior that has begun in concept art. Okay. Well, it kind of depends on what you, you need to figure out what you mm. do first, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a character concept artist, you need to show characters in your portfolio. And I recommend showcasing finished uh, projects that you've worked on personally, like 
not not like work related but personal projects that you worked on showcase like finished rendered pieces as well as sketches recommend having a bunch of sketches in your portfolio if not you know make sure that you have them because that's like one of the biggest things that i see lacks in portfolios is that they don't include any of their process or any of, uh, of their sketches and sketching is pretty important when it comes to concept art right that's what i would recommend first um include a nice variety of uh just things in your portfolio so if you're going to do characters have a nice variety of characters uh, uh don't just like have pretty girls if that's the only thing you do right so one of the things I'm working on in my portfolio is I want to show more than just pretty girls. I try to have a mixture of like guys that try to have humanoids like robots or I have like uh, cat people or orcs, dwarves, or maybe like um, creatures that I have made up myself. Um, different personalities and things like that. If you're doing props, um, you know, I recommend doing some, recommend getting good at like a specific line of things like i know that you can get really good at just doing weapons i know that people do that but not just the same type of weapon but different types of weapons like how far can you go with that um if you're doing hard surface like look at like the list of things you can do with hard surface um and then have more than don't just have one or two posts in your portfolio have like at least 12 posts on your portfolio, like 12 projects, I shall say, before uh, you reach out to any place and say you wanna get hired, right? Because um, if there's only a few posts, it doesn't, art directors and clients can't really gauge what you can do. They need a different artworks to kind of gauge what you like and what you do and your skill level as well. And uh, maybe the, this is a bit of a personal thing, but I don't recommend fan art in your portfolio. Don't include any fan art. You can have redesigns of stuff. So let's say that you're redesigning characters from an older game, or you are maybe creating a new character based off an existing IP. So like people are creating new characters for League of Legends, let's say, like a uh, new, new potential champion. You can do something like that, but I don't recommend having a, uh, uh, pre-existing character like you're doing fan art of a uh, character from Hades right because that character already exists it doesn't you don't actually add anything new uh, as a concept artist it probably shows your skill or your technical skill but it doesn't actually show you're able to design so that's the difference there mm -hmm. yeah that's my answer cool uh and I'll just add if you do have a portfolio that you would like some feedback on then uh we do uh, portfolio reviews every every few weeks in our Discord server. So uh, once again, come along and submit, and you might get your portfolio looked at and get some feedback from us that way. Um, and that's a total Giga Chad plug right there. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess we can end it here. So I just want to say yeah. thanks for everyone who jumped on with me, mm -hmm. and if you. Uh, joined with me on the challenge post the stuff on the moon colony place so you can also tag them on social media um, it was super lovely to be on the stream with you Jaden you were awesome uh -huh. and uh, I'd love to be on again ah oh, well we'd love to have you back thanks for thanks for hanging out Matt it's always yeah. nice yeah it was super uh, fun man yeah all right well thanks again guys and uh, we will speak to you soon all right take care bye oh. My camera. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>